Warm welcome. This is Markus Termin at the 14th of June 2024. The sun is in the sign of Gemini and the moon, as I'm speaking, is still in the sign of Virgo. But we're going to have a moon change this evening around half past eight, Middle European summer time. And then the moon will change to the sign of Libra and we are going to get into the trine energy in between moon and sun. And for a short period, for a very short period, we're going even to have a grand air trine because Pluto retrograde is still also in the air sign of Aquarius. So this means this evening, this night is a good time for thinkers, for intellectual activity for clearing the horizon, to put it that way, which is kind of necessary because the last days have been a little fuzzy. One of the reasons for that might be that Venus and Mercury, Mercury in fact is doing it today, are just passing the back of the sun and turning from a day energy planet to a night energy planet. That means Venus and, and Mercury um, used to rise before the sun rises. They were morning stars, as we put it, you know, Lucifer, son of the morning, you know, that's actually Venus. And um, when the Venus, when the sun sets and Venus and Mercury are going down after the sun, they are going to be evening stars. And this is very important because this is some uh, transformation, you know, any old cultures, including the South American cultures, put these changes, morning star, evening star, on their on their list, on their um, schedule, um, in a way of um, having festivals and, and any kind of uh, ritual transformation that even might have been not exactly uh, friendly from the view of our Christian civilization. Uh, but anyhow, when they come to be an evening star, that means we're not going to see them right away because they are too close to the sun. There's the old teaching that they are sunburned. Uh, but as I learned today, actually Mercury is not because he's in his own sign. That means as Mercury is in his own sign, he grabs it all. He's kind of putting his meaning towards the Sun and Venus at the same time. But then it takes a few weeks and um, after um, a period of time, we will the planets will occur. Mercury, of course, because he's always a pretty low at the horizon is um, difficult to observe, though it's possible, of course, at certain days in the year. But Venus is um, way easier to observe and she will be in the winter time as we're used to it, you know, this brilliant diamond up in the sky. This is Venus as an evening star. When Venus becomes an evening star, she's going to have Libra quality. Venus owns two signs. One is Libra and the other one is Taurus. Taurus is Venus day sign and um, Libra is Venus night sign. And then it also depends in your personal chart. Do you have a night Venus? Is the Venus under the horizon? And is Venus a day star or a night star in your chart? And that puts some quality to Venus. So what happens is um, really independent from what sign they are in right now, Venus and Mercury turn over to be a night star and they get the quality in the case of Mercury, Virgo. And in the case of Venus, they get the additional quality independent from the position where they are in right now of Libra. Now let's have a look at the position where they are actually right now really as you can see mercury behind the sun is touching the sun's back to put it that way some say that's a kazimi position 
I don't see it as Kasimi because Kasimi for me is when it transforms the sun in the front of the sun retrograde. This is only possible retrograde. But as you can see, they are very close to the sun. They are passing by and they are getting to be in this direction, of course. No, this direction. It's the other way around on the screen, you know, uh, from from um, Gemini to, to, to the direction Cancer, of course, you know, and this means that um, the, well, am I right? Yes, I'm right, Cancer. Okay, sorry, 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 turning things around. Um, okay, and this means that um, they are getting towards this direction, but both are actually in the sign of Gemini now and Mercury, of course, is the ruler. Uh, what is what else is there to observe as I'm speaking? Because this is the chart for 12 o'clock at noon, Middle European summer time. You can see that we have a close conjunction of Moon and Lilith. Now, in our astrological community, we have a lot of debates about Lilith because it seems that Lilith in Virgo has a cruel sidekick um, observing what she's really doing. Um, I'm not going to give examples right now because I did the last days anyhow, but there's a chance of observing the real quality of Lilith by Moon and Lilith being touched, you know, and Lilith is not able really to touch anything because after all, she's the point of the moon being the farthest away from the earth, actually. And this is what, this is the quality we are in. The moon is not close. The moon is not catching up the energy of the earth very close, um, uh, but it's on the, on the farthest position that is possible. You know, this is some secret quality and maybe even interesting for an astrology of the future to be more observed as we are able to do it right now. But as I said, Moon is going to shift over to the quality of Libra and then it makes a trine energy to, to the other Libran forces and that is going to get some fresh ideas, some fresh movement, some fresh uh, creativity also in, in, in the zodiac. Okay, that's kind of the view that I put on the chart today. Any special advice uh, to give to you today? As I said, you know, the, the square position in between Gemini and Pisces, this is the signature of our days that won't go off that quick. You know, this is the the gap that is um, that we have to fill in between information and spirituality. If you want to have real spirituality, you need to have a whole lot of knowledge. Actually, there are two possibilities. One possibility is the very, very pure and innocent person that um, has a um, natural judgment and doesn't need all the information actually to um, to, to get out and um, know the truth, kind of know the truth. But we've all grown out of that innocence in some kind and we are all metaphysical educated to, to a point that we don't even know what metaphysics really is. We, we, we are in a, in a bulb, in a, in a in, how, how can I put that, um, our way of thinking needs to be observed itself, you know, because when, we, when we're talking about metaphysics, it's easy to come to an end of thinking um, in a way that um, you say, well, that's a dead end, you know, we can't think farther, we can't think anymore and things like that. But this is only because we are closed in, in the capsule of metaphysics, you know, and there have been uh, important thinkers um, trying to first observe that and then develop alternatives to it. This was at the very beginning of the 20th 
century and those guys were genius and um, as you can see the development from that time on is all about not letting mankind come to the surface to find out what things really are about. That's, for instance, the sense of the general theory of general general theory. Well, let me put it that way. There's no relativity of time and space. You know, this is a cage. Um, intellectual thinking is being encaged in his own abilities. And it is very difficult for those, um, as I put it, intellectually reduced persons to teach them logic again because they completely lost it. That's something for arrogant uh, mathematicians who, who um, really believe they know what's out there. They know the, 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 um, the Big Bang and all the black holes and how big is the universe, how long it is going to last and do we know all the matter out there and what is matter itself and this is most of that is just fairy tale you know nothing of that is true that's completely out of human reality and reality of nature in all which wouldn't be a problem as long as research would be an open thing you know not not like religion to say we got to hold on to certain beliefs now if you believe einstein is wrong you must be a fool because he's the biggest genius the world has ever seen well no it's just the other way around you know and there are going to be big big surprises for mankind coming in over the next years and hold on keep your position the good side is going to win now you listen to Marcus Termin, the 14th of June 2024. Um, hope you have a good day. See you tomorrow. If you want to get in contact with me to have a consultation about your own personal chart, which is actually the thing that you have to operate with, just use this email address send me time date and place where you were born and you can have a zoom link back and we can have a consultation if you like to thank you again for listening see you tomorrow that's it